Hi, a couple of quick disclaimers before the video starts. One, this was all done on a Windows PC. I don't have any experience with the Mac or Linux versions, but what I say here should more or less line up with those other versions. If they don't, leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer them. Number two, this was all done because a lot of my friends were asking me, how do I start streaming? What do I need to stream? What software do I use? And the fact that they ask me those questions first, I'm just really flattered and baffled, of course. There's a lot of more qualified people out there to teach this stuff, but Hey, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. And if you find this helpful, consider sharing this with a friend who's looking to start a stream. Could be you. With that being said, hope you enjoy. Hope you learned something from this. Let's get started. So you want to start streaming to Twitch, but you don't know where to start? I'm here to help. This is my complete beginner's guide to streaming from my own experience. We're going to be covering everything from OBS, alerts, overlays, and the dreaded OBS settings window. Ooh. Before we start, I stream on my main YouTube and Twitch channels every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. Links below in the description. Also, if you want to jump to a specific part of the video, I've included timestamps in the description as well as in a pinned comment. YouTube should automatically split this into chapters for your convenience. Let's start from the top. We're going to be using a program called Open Broadcasting Software, or OBS. If you don't have it already, download it from obsproject.com for your specific operating system. All the links I mentioned will also be down in the description. For my case, I'll click Windows. Run the installer and when it finishes, don't run OBS just yet. On your desktop, right-click the OBS Studio shortcut and click Properties. Click the Compatibility tab and check the box that says Run this program as an administrator. Click Apply, then click OK. Now you can double-click on the shortcut, then hit Yes on the prompt to open OBS. Congrats, you're now in OBS! It's looking a little barren, so we're going to have to add our scenes onto our canvas. That's what this window is called. Before we start, let's quickly go over to our OBS settings by clicking File, then Settings. Click the Video tab and change your base canvas resolution to your monitor's resolution. To check that, right-click your desktop, then go to Display Settings. Scroll down until you see Advanced Display Settings, and here you'll see your monitor's resolution. It should be set up for you by default, but your mileage may vary. Once you've done that, click Apply, then click OK. We'll come back to this later. So let's create some scenes. If you look in the bottom left, you'll see that one is already made for you. Right-click it and rename it to something like Gameplay. To the right of that is where we add our sources. Click the plus icon and let's pick Display Capture. Give it a name if you want, you could always rename your sources later. Right here is where you decide what display to capture, and below that is whether or not you want to display the cursor or not. Look in a little Pandora's box right now. Click OK and it's as simple as that. Keep in mind that whatever is on your monitor is what the stream will see. If you don't want that and you just want to show your game, go back down to Sources and now we'll add a Game Capture. I'm going to call mine Battlefield. If you have your game open, then you could tell OBS to only capture a specific game or application. I currently have Battlefield 4 open right now, so I'll tell OBS to capture a specific window, then in the window setting, I'll choose Battlefield 4. Now, if you alt-tab out of your game to look at Google Chrome or other applications, your stream will only see your game. Plus, it's actually a lighter load on your PC, so everybody wins. I'll quickly mention that if you want to toggle the visibility of any of your sources, you can click the eye beside each source. Beside the eye is a lock, which, when you click it, will lock the sources in place, which prevents them from moving. This is useful if you want to keep them in a specific place. For now, leave these unlocked and visible. And let's get rid of a uh, game capture. Again, you could always add this back in later. Let's add a camera if you have one. Go back to the sources and add a video capture device. Let's call this one camera. Under device is where you could choose your camera. It should say webcam or C920 or something similar to that. For me, I use an Elgato cam link, which allows me to use a DSLR as a webcam. So I'll click cam link. Hello. Leave these settings alone for now. Only switch from device default to custom if your webcam is giving you problems. Now I can see your beautiful face on stream, which you might notice that it's now covering our monitor capture. We can fix this by clicking on any of these points up here and clicking and dragging them down. Then we can move it to any place on the screen. Right about here looks good. If you want to crop your webcam to hide your potentially messy room, then you could alt click these points and drag over so you can crop your webcam any shape you please. The green indicates which sides have been cut off, and the red means it's at its original dimensions. If you want to squish or stretch a source, you could shift click and do the same thing. We can get a wide Putin mean up in here. As of October 2020, there's no way to undo or control Z in action, so the best bet you could do is right click your webcam, go to transform, and click reset transform then resize it back to where you want it. As a side note, the order of your sources here matters. So right now my camera is above my monitor, but if I click and drag it down like this, you'll see that my face is hidden and now the monitor is the top source. If you use Photoshop or any kind of art program, you know how layering systems work. You could also use these arrows down here to change the order of the sources. Let's move this camera back up. Bonus free resource! To add a little bit of pizzazz to the stream, I've included two different webcam borders, one for 16x9 and one for 4x3. I've included both in the description below as a download link. This is a PNG file that can be placed on top of your webcam to give yourself a little bit of distinction from yourself and the game. Once you have it downloaded, click the plus button and add an image. We'll call this one 
camera border. Once you find your border, click OK, and now it's on your canvas. Now we can resize it to fit our camera. There, that looks pretty good. Bonus pro tip. If you don't want your sources to snap automatically to the edge of the screen, you can hold control while dragging to disable that snap feature temporarily. You could also use the arrow keys to move your sources around. Also, if you want to keep your webcam and border grouped together, you can control click both the camera border and the camera, right click, and then select group selected items. And then this will be put in a group or folder. And now when you move your webcam and your border, it'll be moved around as if it were one single source. All right, that's your first scene. Now let's make another one. This one will be our intermission screen for when we want to have a little bit of downtime, we want to talk with our chat. Click the plus icon down here in scenes, and then we'll make a new scene called intermission. Add a new video capture device source, and then we'll add an existing camera because OBS knows that we added our camera before in our previous scene. So we'll click that. And there we go, our simple intermission scene. You can now switch between your scenes by clicking on them. Ah, ah. Bonus pro tip. If you want to change how your scenes transition between each other, you could do that down here in the scenes transitions menu. Click the drop down here and you could add another scene transition. Let's add a slide transition. We'll leave it at its default name. Now you can change which direction the scene you're transitioning to will slide in from. Click preview transition to see what this will look like. Click OK and now when you switch between your scenes, it'll give you that slide transition. Another bonus pro tip. You could have a different transition for each scene. So if I wanted to fade into my intermission scene, but slide to my gameplay scene, I'll go to intermission, transition override, then I'll click fade. Now when I switch over to my gameplay scene, it'll use the default scene transition we set over here. But when we switch to our intermission scene, it overrides the fade. Cool, now let's add our alerts. This is what will pop up when someone follows the channel or gives you a donation. The two main services that people use are Streamlabs and Stream Elements. We're gonna go over both. Let's start with Streamlabs. Go to streamlabs.com and click login at the top. For our purposes, we're gonna log in with Twitch. Make sure to authorize your account and now you'll be taken to this dashboard. On the left under features, click alert box. This may look a little bit intimidating, so bear with me. First, let's copy this widget URL by clicking copy. Do not show this URL to anyone because they could use it too. Go back into OBS and let's add this to our gameplay scene. Add a new source and let's add a browser source. We're gonna call this one alerts. Paste the URL here and change the width and height to 1920 by 1080 or the base canvas resolution you said earlier. You could probably see that there's nothing there right now, but if we go to Streamlabs and click test follow, our alert will pop up. This is what Streamlabs has by default, but we could further customize that. Click over to the Follows tab. From here, you can disable specific alerts if you don't want them popping up. Change the way the text and image are shown. Change the animation for how the alert appears and disappears. Change what the actual text says. Good. Change the text animation. You could change the image, which you could do by clicking Select Image, choosing from Streamlabs' stock images or upload your own. Change the sound the same way. Change the volume of that sound. Change how long the alert is displayed on screen. And set a delay for the alert text in seconds. If you know code or you're a programmer, you could choose to enable custom CSS to further customize your options, but that's a topic for another day. If you open the font settings down here, you could choose what font to use, the size of the font, the font weight, which is basically the boldness, the text color, and the text highlight color, which is usually the usernames. Once you're done with that, save your changes by clicking Save Settings. I recommend clicking this button a few times to make sure Streamlabs makes the changes. You can now test your alerts and see if you're happy with them. Hey, I haven't forgotten about alert variations. This is more suited for things like donations and raids. Let's scroll back up and click the Donations tab. These settings are mostly the same with some exceptions. Here you can enable text-to-speech, set a minimum amount for the text-to-speech to trigger, change the voice, change the level of spam security to protect against donation messages that read www or something like that, change the volume of the text-to-speech voice, and you could choose whether or not to include the message template in the text-to-speech, which is the name donated this many dollars. Here you could set the minimum amount for the donation alert to pop up. Enable clipping on donations means that whenever someone donates, Twitch will automatically make a clip of your reaction to that donation. I actually recommend you disable that. Down here, you could change the appearance of the donation messages. You can see that donation text right below the user and how much they donated. You can choose whether or not to show this message altogether. Allow the use of Twitch emotes in the messages, which will also be read by the text-to-speech if you have that enabled. Set a minimum amount to show the donor's message. And you know these font settings from here. Here's where you can have fun with your alerts with variations. In alert variations, you can create different alerts for specific donation, raid, or host amounts. Let's add a variation with our current settings. Here, you could give it a name and the condition for this variation to happen. You could set this variation to show up randomly for fun, or you could choose to have it show up when a donation amount is at least a certain amount, when a donation amount is exactly an amount, or if the donation is the largest of the current stream. The rest of these settings are the same as before. Let's set this to exactly, and we'll put $5. We'll name this five dollars. We'll change the image and the sound, and now we could scroll down and save it. Now you'll see your variation here, and you could choose to disable it at any time. To delete a variation, go back to edit, and then select delete. Make sure to click save settings or else your changes will not take effect. First, let's test out our normal donation alert. 
Pretty standard stuff. And now let's test our alert variation. There we go. A different alert for a specific donation amount. Feel free to make as many custom alert variations as you want. The only new options for the hosts and raids alert is setting a minimum amount of viewers for the alert to pop up. If you don't know, a host is when another user plays your stream on their page, and a raid is when a user brings their community to your stream after their stream. Let's jump back into OBS and adjust our alert box. So we're gonna test the follow, and I'm gonna move my alert box to a place where it isn't too intrusive. I'm gonna place it above my webcam. Let's test it again. There we go. Now let's add it to our intermission screen. Let's go over to that one. Click the plus button in sources. Let's add a browser source and add an existing one, alerts. We'll hit test again. And this time I'm gonna move it over to the top right this time. One more quick test and there we go. You now have your alerts in OBS. If you're ready to go into the OBS settings, then skip over to that section. If you wanna use stream elements, keep watching. Now let's move on to stream elements. Go to streamelements.com and log in with your Twitch account. Once you've authorized it, you'll be here at the dashboard. Click my overlays under alerts and overlays on the left. And then we're gonna click create blank overlay. It'll then ask you what resolution you want your overlay to be in. Remember our monitor resolution from earlier? If you do, then you could choose it from this drop down menu. If it's not listed here, then you could choose custom. For me, I'm gonna choose 1080p, so 1920 by 1080. So now it's looking pretty empty might look a little more intimidating because there's nothing here. Let's fix that by clicking add widget or clicking the plus in the bottom left. Go to alerts and select the alert box. There we go. To test it out, click emulate with the bell icon and let's emulate a follower event. There we go. So that was stream elements default image and sound. But let's change that by going over to the cog wheel beside follower alert. Here you can change the alerts video or change it to an image. The way you do that is by clicking here, go to upload, upload your files, and then select the one you want by clicking on submit. You can control the volume of the video, the volume of the sound and the sound itself, the layout of the text and image, the alert message text itself, and how long you want the alert to be on screen for. If you know how to code or you're a programmer, then you can enable custom CSS, but that's a topic for another video. In the TTS settings, you can enable text-to-speech, the volume of the text-to-speech, the voice, and add an activation delay. In the text settings, you could change the font used by the alert. You can enable a custom font if you'd like, change the size and its various parameters, add a text stroke and its color, enable a text shadow and change its settings here. And you can change the animation and color of the highlighted text, usually the username. For the animation settings, you could set an animation for when the text appears and disappears. Beside that, you could adjust how long it takes. Same with the text animation settings. You could set a text appearance delay or a text disappearance offset. I haven't forgotten about variation settings. These are more useful for things like tips or raids. Exit out of the follow alert by clicking the X, and now we're going to go into the tip alert settings. These settings are mostly the same with a few exceptions. Here you can choose whether or not to show the tip messages. I'm going to enable that. And you can set a minimum amount for the tip alert to show up. In the TTS settings, you could choose whether you want the text -to speech to announce the action. For example, username donated $5. And you could set a minimum tip for the TTS to trigger. In the text settings, you could change the secondary text, which would be the donor message. Here's where you can have fun with your alerts with variation settings. In the variation settings, you can create different alerts for specific donation, raid, or host amounts. Let's add a new variation. You could choose to copy settings from an existing alert, or you could start with a blank. Let's copy from alert box one tip. The only new settings here are the conditions for this alert to pop up. First, you could set the alert to trigger when an amount or a name is matched, which is more appropriate for raids or hosts. Set it to appear when it's hit is an exact amount, at least a certain amount, or it's the top donation of the stream. You could set the requirement amount, and you could change the chance percentage in case you want to add a bit of randomness to it. We're going to leave this at 100%. We're going to change the parameter to amount, the condition to exact, and the requirement amount to $5. We'll name this variation $5, and we'll also change the sound. I'm going to use this Windows XP startup sound I uploaded. The rest of these settings are the same as before. Now we can click Save Variation. From here, you can enable or disable this variation at any time. You could also duplicate it or edit it later. If you want to delete a certain variation, Click the settings and then select delete. Let's test it out by doing a regular tip event. There it is. And now let's test out our variation alert. Fantastic. Feel free to add as many variations as you want. For the raid and host alerts, the only new option is to set a host and raid minimum for the alert to pop up. Hosts are when another user plays your stream on their page, and a raid is when a user brings their community to your stream after their stream. One cool thing about stream elements is that you could arrange your alerts in this overlay without having to arrange them in OBS. Let me show you how. In OBS, select the scene you want to add your overlay to, in this case our gameplay scene. You're going to right click your canvas and select Screenshot Preview. This will take a screen grab of your current canvas preview. To see it, click on File and Show Recordings, and your file should start with Screenshot along with the date and time. Back in Stream Elements, we're going to add a static custom image. Set the image size to Scaled and click Set Image. Upload your screenshot here, and then select it by clicking on Submit. Go to Position, Size, and Style and change the width and height to 1920 by 1080 or your canvas resolution. Then click Center Widget. In our layers, you might see that our image is now above our alert box, so we won't be able to see it. Drag the image down so we can see our alerts. Now I'm going to move my alert box to somewhere where it isn't too intrusive. I'm going to move it right above my webcam. So now that we have that there, 
We can click emulate and see how it looks. That looks pretty good. We don't want this image in our actual overlay, so we're going to go over here and click the eye next to our image. It'll turn translucent, which means it won't show up. Give this overlay a name, we'll call it Gameplay scene for organization purposes, and then we'll click save. I recommend saving a few times to make sure stream elements makes the changes. And then we're going to copy the overlay URL right here. Do not share this URL with anyone because they could use it too. It's time to bring it into OBS. We're going to add a new source in our gameplay scene. We're going to add a new browser source. We're going to call this alerts gameplay. I'm going to paste the URL here and then change the width and height to 1920 by 1080. Let's emulate a follower event. And there it goes. Another cool feature about Stream Elements is that if you wanted to add something like a tip goal or another widget to this overlay, you could add that in, save it, and you could keep the single browser source to avoid clutter. It'd also be less taxing on your CPU. Let's do this for our other scene. Switch to the intermission scene, right click, and select Screenshot Preview. Back in Stream Elements, go back to the main overlays page, click the three dots on the overlay we just created, and click Duplicate. If you get this pop-up, select Twitch. You should now see a copy of Gameplay Scene, or whatever you called it before. Click the Edit button, and then we're gonna add our screenshot. So we'll add a static custom image, set this to Scaled, bring over our image, go to Position, Size, and Style, set this to 1920 by 1080, and then Center Widget. Bring our image down. I'm gonna put this alert box in the top right. Let's test it out. Looking good. Let's hide our reference image by clicking the I. We'll name this overlay Intermission Scene, and we'll save and then copy the URL. And back over into OBS, create a new browser source. We're going to name this one Alerts Intermission. Paste the URL and change the width and height to 1920 by 1080. Now, if we test it out one more time, there we go. There's our alerts. All right, now it's finally time to tackle the OBS settings. I'm going to go to the File, Settings. You could also click settings in the bottom right. We're going to skip over general and move to stream. This is where you tell OBS to send your stream to. We're going to select Twitch and select connect account and then log in with your Twitch account. This is way easier than manually adding your stream key. If you do go the stream key route, do not show it to anyone because if they have that, they could stream to your account. Click apply and then you'll see some browser docs appear here. Twitch is actually integrated into OBS, so these will pop up automatically once you connect your Twitch account. The best thing about these is that you could drag them and snap them into OBS so you could have a much cleaner interface. But what about my activity fee for my followers and donations? Don't worry. Click the view button, click docs, and then we'll do Twitch activity feed. Then you could add it just right here. Let's jump back into the settings and go to the output tab. You'll most likely be on simple mode at first, but I recommend switching it to advanced. We're going to focus mainly on the streaming tab here. Keep your audio track at one and change your keyframe interval to two. For the encoder, this will be based on your PC specs. If you don't have a dedicated GPU like a GTX or RTX card from Nvidia, stick to X264. If you do, switch to NVENC new. For me, I'll stick with NVENC. Keep rate control at CBR. Here's the tricky part. Bitrate is the amount of data you're sending to Twitch. The higher the number, the better your stream will look. 6,000 is the max that Twitch allows, but don't set it to that just yet. Run a speed test on speedtest.net and find out what your upload speed is. A good rule of thumb is to set your bitrate to about 80% of your upload speed to allow for fluctuation. I highly recommend being connected via ethernet for this. So for example, if my upload speed was four megabits per second or 4,000 kilobits per second, I would set my bitrate to around 3,200. If you have a really good upload speed, you may be inclined to set the bitrate to the max of 6,000, but hear me out first. Unless you're a Twitch partner, you won't have access to transcoding options. You know how on YouTube, you can click the gear icon and change the video quality? Well, you won't have that option for your Twitch stream, so your viewers may have a hard time receiving all of that data if they have a slow internet connection. The max bitrate I would recommend is 4,500 to help with this, but do some testing on your end. For the preset, if you're on NVENC, you could choose quality or max quality. You could experiment with these other ones if you're having performance issues. If you're on X264, you have the CPU usage preset. The faster this is, the worse it looks, but it'll be easier on your PC. Medium is what everyone aims for, Anything higher than that, and you'll start to see diminishing returns in terms of quality. I recommend setting this to fast as a baseline. If you're experiencing stuttering or drop frames, set this to faster or very fast. All right, the scary part's over. Now let's move on to audio. Your sample rate and channels should be left at their defaults of 48 and stereo. Your global audio devices is where you'll add your desktop audio and microphone. For desktop audio, select your headphones. This will be called speakers or something similar. For me, I have the voice meter input. And for the mic aux audio, Choose your microphone. For me, it's the Blue Yeti. Click apply. Now you'll see that your audio devices are down in your audio mixer. Play some music or a game to make sure your audio levels are coming through and do the same for your microphone. Now let's go back to the video tab. Again, your base canvas resolution should be your monitor's resolution. If you change this now, your OBS canvas will crop, causing you to go back and resize everything. Now, if you're having trouble maintaining a smooth stream, you could change the output scaled resolution to something like 1280 by 720 and change the common FPS value to 30. You may be sacrificing quality, but it will be a much better experience for your viewers. But again, do some testing on your end. Now let's move on to hotkeys. Remember how we could switch between our scenes by clicking in between them? With hotkeys, you could set it to a key on your keyboard so you don't have to alt-tab out of your game. Scroll down until you see your gameplay scene, and in the switch to scene box, click it, and then set it to a key that you don't use very often. 
I'm gonna use the F9 key. Now do the same for your intermission scene. I'm gonna do F10. Click apply, and now you should see that when you press F10 or F9, it goes to your gameplay, and then F10 goes to your intermission scene. Almost there, last one is advanced. Nothing much to change over here. Make sure process priority is set to normal, color format MV12, color space 709, and color range partial. And you're done with the settings. Last thing we're gonna talk about is the audio mixer. This is where you control your audio levels that get sent out to your stream. First off, you might notice that your camera or webcam is being picked up as an audio source. Unless that's the only microphone you have, I would still recommend picking up a cheap condenser microphone. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mute it by clicking the speaker icon, and then click the gear next to it, and then click hide. Now you won't see it in your audio mixer. As a general rule of thumb for audio levels, you'll want to keep your desktop audio in this green section and your mic at its peak volume in the yellow section. Nothing should ever be in this red section here. Bonus pro tip. If you have the problem of any audio device being too quiet, even though it's leveled out at zero decibels, you can add a filter to it. We're gonna use our microphone as an example, click the gear and then select filters. This is a powerful window on its own, but for now, click the plus icon and select gain. Raise this slider up accordingly until you reach an acceptable level. You can toggle this filter on and off at any time by clicking the eye. And that's pretty much it. You can click start streaming and you can start your first stream on Twitch. A few more words of advice before you start. One, don't expect a large amount of follows or donations when you start out. Chances are you'll be starting at nothing. And if you're thinking you're doing this for the money, you're in the wrong mindset your passion will speak for you. Make sure this is something you actually wanna do. Number two, don't go and advertise your stream everywhere. It may seem helpful, but it just comes across as spam or clutter. Three, you don't need expensive equipment when you're starting out. Learn to use and adapt to what you have. Then when you have spare funds, you could invest it into other streaming gear. And finally, have fun with it. Don't pretend to be someone you're not. Sure, you could take inspiration from other streamers, like their overlays, alerts, and other things like that. But at the end of the day, you have to make it yours. Find your brand and crank that up to 100. Practice makes perfect, and you can learn a lot from a lot of practice. If you enjoyed, like the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and subscribe, maybe. Thanks for watching.